Regiacs, am I wearing a straw hat? 110%. Now, why am I wearing a straw hat inside while I'm doing a TLC talk episode? I don't know. You know what? I'm dreaming of Cabo, baby, okay? Everybody seems to be in Cabo for spring break, and yet I've been working. Working and trying to figure out my next damn steps to having a healthy child, okay? I have abandoned IVF. We all heard this from last week. And so now I am taking you natural conception for her, honey. Schman's on it, and we're boning away, and hopefully we're going to try one more time to have a healthy kid, and we're also looking to foster to adopt. So there you go. You know, And then I might do an egg donor. I don't know. I got options, guys, okay? So in the meantime, that's where all my money is going, and that's why I'm wearing the straw hat. You can see it on our YouTube. Ah, let's get into some TLC talk. If you want all the latest Sister Wives tea, because there was some discussion over the past weekend, Garrison Brown's tragic, tragic passing, you know, may the Sister Wives family find some sort of peace. Um, If you want to hear all that confusion, it's up this past weekend. I dropped an emergency episode on Sunday. And the long and the short is this. Police have ruled his passing a suicide. However, they can't completely close the case until the toxicology and the medical examiner's report comes back, and that's a key element. So there you go. There's other details, and we'll talk about that. Also, um, coming up on the show, I will tell you the kids, Garrison Brown's brothers, are relaunching his business to keep his memory alive. So we'll talk about that. How? Uh, let's do some fun news. Let's do some lighthearted things and get into it. Angela Deem and Scott Wern, are they dating? It is over, over, way over between Angela and Michael, okay? It is totally done. He has another woman in Georgia. He got fake passports. Apparently, I learned this from a 90-day source that sometimes people come here from this country and they have networks of other people from their country. Michael is originally from Nigeria and they connect with them and they make alternate plans to help each other become American citizens. Okay, I get that. I understand. And Michael got a whole new girlfriend. He got a he, he got a copy of his whole pa- his whole passport, the whole works with this chick. So they are totally done. And this past week, a video of Scott Warren. <laughs> Shout out to Scott. Scott's a friend of this show. I don't care. Every time I talk about him, people hate on his ass. They hate on him. They they like they're like Sarah. Why are you promoting Scott? He's a moocher. He loves to just be in the news. Well, I'm a fame whore as well, you know. And if I had more stamina, like if I could stay up past nine o'clock, I'd be a Hellcat, you know. I mean, I would be out in these streets in Hollywood hooking up with Bill Maher. I'd be having hot sex with older rich men in Hollywood, but I I can I, I get in my pajamas at six thirty. Okay, I'm not going anywhere to really highlight my fame hoariness, okay? And when I become famous, it will be for doing a show at 7 a.m. in the morning, all right? That will be it, okay? So I cannot stay up late. However, Scott Wern loves some attention, and he hooked himself up with Angela Deem, and the best part about this (laughs) is that fans actually want Scott and Angela to work out because they feel like the two of them are basically the same person. So they hook up at a restaurant in Georgia and Scott and Angela goes, let me introduce you to my new bodyguard. And then Scott comes out and he's all smiles and he's giving her a hug. This, by the way, was on his social media. And, um, you know, of course she's got, she's sitting at the table. She's got a pack of smokes, you know, she's got those marbles. (laughs) I want to have a cigarette. You know, I really do. I think I might start smoking because I actually had dinner with a guy the other night. I mean, with my husband, all of us, he's married too, who studies genetics. And he says alcohol is the worst thing for you. Like if you had a cigarette twice a week, that'd be actually less, less bad for you. I mean, if you're a chain smoker, that kills your lungs, but like, like, and I love a cigarette. I love the way it looks. All right. Anyhow, I'm not smoking. So Everybody was going bananas about these two. I want them to actually date. I think these two would be great together. And then Scott tries to like give her a lap dance a little bit. And she starts singing some like country, new age country song. I don't know. I don't really follow country. But she's like getting down at the restaurant. And the two of them seem to be having a great time. And she says to the world, this is my bodyguard, baby. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't hate it. 
Chantel from the family Chantel. Scott's been on this podcast and the fabulous Chantel has been on this podcast. Has Chantel had a bunch of plastic surgery? Oh Lord, the interwebs are, y'all are going bananas over this. Chantel, what'd you do to your face, girl? What about that booby job? Now, first of all, I believe, I can't even recall, but I think I asked her when she was on this show if she'd had plastic surgery and she admitted to Botox and lip fillers. I didn't think she looked that different. This was a picture that was on her Instagram. I did think she had this white dress on and almost this like white, I think it was like some sort of t-shirt or shawl or something over the back of her, um, the cart, the, the seat in the car. And I actually thought it was a wedding dress. I was like, are you? Like I had to do a double take to make sure you weren't getting married. I didn't think her face looked all that different, but oh my God. Fans are going nuts that she looks so different. She's definitely had a boob job. She she says she has never had a boob job. Chantel's a hot piece. I mean, Chantel's, there's a reason Waka Flocka and Drake, which by the way, she confirmed on my podcast because I remember this part, were in her DMs. These rappers want in on sexy Chantel so hardcore. But Chantel is, she's just, she said on the show, she's just not down for that life because some of them have multiple side chicks and that's what they want to do. Or you've got to be down with the lifestyle and she's just not there. I don't blame her. I couldn't either. Couldn't. Um, I feel like this is, I like this episode. There's a lot of new couple alerts, new things happening. Amanda Wilhelm. All right. So if this is all, this episode should actually be titled if, you know, six degrees of, of, or seven degrees of Scott Warren. But anyhow, Amanda and Scott, you guys saw them together doing Instagrams earlier this year. And they also came on my podcast to talk and reveal their story. And Amanda hinted that she was dating people. And she, of course, a, li a little bit, they tease like, could it be, could Scott and Amanda be together? Well, they're not together. Scott's too old for her. She's dating somebody her own age. And hello, let's introduce him to the world, Joel Zalazar. Okay, Joel, Joel. Yes, Joel Zalazar. Um, I'm not mad at you, Joel. This man looks like another version of Rosvin. Oh, he's hot. He looks age appropriate. And they look very happy together. Now, interestingly enough, Amanda and her new man were in Miami at the same time that Rosvin was there. He's so cute. He's like young. No, this is like the type of guy. Oh my God. Are you guys seeing this on my YouTube? He's hot. Okay, Joel, we're not mad at you having a moment. I like it, Joel. I like it. Yes. Okay. You get the TSFS seal of approval. Now it's a little weird to me. And I don't know how long they've been dating, but it gives me a little bit like I don't, she she has him in her Instagram description and he does not have her in his. Mm -hmm. I don't really love that. Mm -hmm. That gives me control vibes. I don't know. I just don't like that. Like either we reciprocating or not. I, I love the fact that my husband is not on social media. Thank you, Lord. He doesn't know where to find TikTok. It is so nice. It is so nice because, you know, people are always in people's DMs. I get less of them now. Now that I've been booed up for five years, I get less. But when before I was booed up, it was not good. It was not good, guys. And, you know, you have a few drinks and you're like, oh, well, let me check out this profile. And then you're spending a little too long on that profile. Um, okay, I'd spend a lot of time on his. This man is a smoke show. <laughs> okay. Looks like he's Argentinian, but now lives in Miami. Mm. We ain't mad. Now, he does have a lot of photos of Amanda on his Instagram, so I'll take that. Not a lot, but he has some. All right. Oh, my God. This guy is cute. Look at him in the orange. I love it. Congrats to her. We don't know how the heck Rosvin is doing, but apparently he was in Miami. Rosvin, adore you, but you're old news. 90 Day Fiance, we got a confirmation that... Usman, he does not have a child. He does not have a child. So last week I told you, no kid. And Kiara, we um we hit it, we texted her, Kiara Elise, and she says that no. I remember I I did, you can go back and listen. I sent her a voice message while we were live, and she wrote back and she said no. 
Usman does not have a child. It is not his. It's a friend, and he likes to parade. You know, he li- he loves the attention too. Ooh. Don't we all love attention? On I, I mean, we like a little bit of attention. Everybody, let's see. Is there any more six, seventh degree, six, seven degrees of um, Scott Warren? I don't think there is. Oh no, they haven't dated. But can I tell you who looks smoking hot and who's lost a lot of weight and is getting a ton of praise on the internet? Liz Woods, Big Ed's ex, Liz, another fabulous TSFS guest. They're actually one of my favorite interviews. I'm kind of obsessed with Liz. Liz, another smoke show. Now, you guys are cruel. You guys are awful online. People people going, you know, when you shed 250 pounds of a guy, meaning Ed, uh, you feel a lot better. Now, I, I don't, look, I think she did genuinely have feelings for a while for Ed. They did love each other. Now, they got married, which I hope, we get an explanation of because they're definitely separated so was the wedding for tlc because because we haven't seen any footage of it or was the wedding real i can't figure that out anyway there is no specific word on how much weight liz has lost but she has kept people up to date on and off and she's been doing a cleanse sounds like it's nothing extreme but she's been working out doing a cleanse and she looks better than ever Liz, we love you. Big Ed, we love you. Come back on the podcast, you two. Tell us what went wrong in that love fest. Mm, Tell us. Was it right? Was it wrong? We need to know. Let's thank a sponsor. Guys, thank you so much for frequenting my sponsors. This is my full-time job. So every time you listen and you purchase from a sponsor, you are helping me and the amazing people that make this show happen behind the scenes, like my producers, audio engineer, and my fabulous social media advisors. Thank you for frequenting my sponsors here at the Sarah Frazier Show. And that includes Dr. Will Neem with Horizon Fibroids. This is for my DC listeners. If you are in DC, Maryland, Virginia, and you are a woman with fibroids, by the way, 80% of us will have one by the age of 50, you may be having long periods, heavy periods, having trouble getting pregnant. This can all be because of fibroids. OBGYNs, we love them. But sometimes they advise just having a hysterectomy, which is bananas. I've had women write into this show and say, I was told to have a hysterectomy at 38. I met a fabulous guy at 40, and I would have loved to have had the option to maybe explore having a child. Well, Dr. Will Neem does not perform a hysterectomy until that is the last resort. He's known for uterine fibroid embolization, a low downtime surgical procedure that is covered by insurance. Want to make sure he takes your insurance? Go to horizonfibroids.com. You can make your appointment and tell them the Sarah Fraser show sent you love, 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 love that. All right. Um, so thank you, by the way, for frequenting the sponsors. Let's talk the latest with sister wife stuff. I-, I told you I did a whole special on this because of the confusion around Garrison Brown's passing and, um, you know, McKelty Brown, I I'm obsessed with her Patreon. I love her. If you're not subscribing, it's amazing. Uh, I'm a new subscriber, by the way, to McKelty's. As far as I know, Gwen, who had a YouTube subscription and a Patreon, is not doing it. If she fires it back up, let me know. I want in. So McKelty's had a lot to say about the funeral, Garrison's passing. Um, are the kids writing tell-all books? I did this whole emergency episode. McKelty's thinking about writing a tell-all, which I would love. But she's very worried about, she says she will upset a lot of family members, which I said leads me to believe. And Mary's talked about writing a book. I think there's a lot more to their story than we're even told. And I don't know why that is. I'm assuming maybe because they've got 18 seasons under their belt that they've negotiated some levels of privacy on the show. Um, which makes sense to me because I'm a complete sister wives addict, but I will say season 18. For the most part, we didn't, we got a ton of flashbacks. They film it now on their cell phone. It's very, it's, I guess, not as juicy as I think I would like it to be considering I went back and watched season one, right? Okay. So um, the other updates that are happening that people have had, of course, things to weigh in on is Garrison Brown's, he himself had launched a clothing company called Bob Floral back in like 2019. 2018, 2019. 
And 2020, he hit pause on it. And now family members are saying that that was because of his depression. He had put out a social media post on Bob Floral's Instagram, basically saying, look, we're going to hit pause. We're going to regroup and, you know, we'll relaunch, right? Internally, they're saying that he obviously had a lot of mental health issues that were going on. Now we hear that the brothers, that Garrison Brown's brothers are going to carry on his dream and legacy by relaunching Bob Florals, the company, with a focus on Hawaiian shirts. And you may have seen at some of the um, funeral gatherings, at some of the celebrations of life for Garrison Brown, that people have worn Hawaiian shirts. So that was an update. Also, the other thing that I told you about on the emergency podcast is Janelle Brown has apparently filed a business license to have a greenhouse and floral uh, farm company. So a lot of people think she may be opening like a farm, garden, floral center in Garrison's honor as well to keep his memory alive, to continue her businesses. I think it's great. Um, this family needs, you know, I'm sure like we, anybody that's lost a loved one, you guys know, if you followed me, I lost my dad when I was 14, headed to 15 years old from cancer very suddenly. And you think about that person every single day. So if you can incorporate them, I think, into your work, into your life, keep their legacy. And to me, I think the thing that the more you grieve in life and the more you, you never get over losing someone, but the more you can, I think speak to them, come to peace with them. They really do, I believe, kind of communicate with you through their spirit, through their soul, through, you know, their memories. And what a beautiful thing to keep him alive, you know, keep his memory alive for people and and how many people he's touched. We've already seen that with the unbelievable outpouring of donations you guys have made to the animal shelters in Flagstaff. So good for the family. Also, uh, a report came out that there was no anger and animosity at the National Guard funeral where you saw the entire family gathering. Now, Janelle posted this on her Instagram, basically saying this was a beautiful celebration. And we've seen some of the snarky com comments online, uh, mostly geared to towards Cody and Robin being there. But lots of sources are telling news outlets, I shouldn't say lots, but some sources are telling news outlets that it was a be beautiful gathering. Cody and Rob, and especially Cody, was a bit standoffish given that the family does remain estranged until Garrison's passing. Um, but they do say in the photos that were, were released by the Nevada National Guard, which had some controversy around them from the family, um, that Cody was a bit standoffish and was more resilient in mingling, a source has told The Sun. Robin encouraged Cody to sit close to Janelle, referring to the patriarch's last standing wife, who has not been in communication with her sister wives, Christine, Mary, and Janelle. Robin hasn't. It wasn't good for Robin either, said the source. A lot of the family was still resentful towards her. Um, so, however, the source went on to say that the family reunion was a bit awkward, but everyone came together and really supported each other, which is really exactly what Janelle has said as well. Uh, there's no anger. There's no fighting. There was none of that. And Cody even um, had a vulnerable and open conversation with David Woolley, the source continued, about Christine Brown's new husband. Mm. I got to say, I mean, Mary's alluded to this on her Friday and Friends. It seems like this horrible tragedy that, of course, no one would wish on anyone seems to have maybe brought the family together. And Mary even said on her recent video, like, we all came together. There's still a lot of healing to do, but hopefully this is the beginning of maybe the family coming together and having a connection. So who knows? Obviously praying for them, hoping and wishing for, you know, the best that they can possibly be in this really difficult, difficult time. Okay. Oh, one last thing. We've got new shows. TLC continues to surprise me with brand new shows that they are dropping, like Doubling Down with the Doricos are coming back. Now, there was a lot of, I. oh my God, I had one fan on TikTok coming in my DMs. We've got to save Doubling Down right to the network. Get a petition going. I'm like, girl, I, you think like... I, like I have the free time to just do a petition for Dion and the Doricos to get a fucking season renewal. <laughs> I mean, 
Uh, no, I do. I like, I'm married. I got a child. I got a full-time job here podcasting. I'm launching a podcast course. I mean, I'm a bit busy here to launch a petition. Well, apparently it worked because starting Tuesday, May 14th at 8 p.m. on TLC, doubling down with the Doricos comes back. So there you go. It is returning. On top of that, Outdaughtered is back May 7th. If you're a fan of Outdaughtered, um, that is basically like people that have like all girl uh, quintuplets um, and more. I think it's just one family. Sorry. Uh, I'm not, I haven't really been a fan of Outdaughtered, but it is on our favorite network, TLC. So with a growing list of responsibilities at home and work, the Busby family returns this season with the start of a new school year upon them. Adam and Danielle are struggling to keep up with their all-girl quintuplets. Ava, Olivia, Hazel, Riley, Parker, and their oldest daughter, Blake. Can they keep it all together on Outdaughtered? Love it. All right. Uh, So... We'll see. There are your shows back. And you know, MILF Manor also returning here very soon. The MILF Manor season two. I did not see that coming. I didn't see that they would be getting a second season, but they are. All right. Always the Sarah Fraser show drops podcasts daily. Be sure to subscribe, by the way, to my show. Hit the subscribe button on Apple. If you didn't know this, Apple did a reset in the fall for all of us uh, podcasters where they essentially wiped out long time subscribers that I've had from the beginning. If you weren't super active with the show, why did you do that, Apple? Like, hello, just because they haven't engaged with the show in two fucking years doesn't mean they couldn't come back tomorrow with my Drake Bell interview. Thanks a freaking lot. Anyway, hit the subscribe button and tell a friend. Bye, everybody!